Hello there, and happy new year. Here we are in 2022, and we want to welcome you to the Just Talking About Films podcast. My name is Ian Sargentson. And my name's Luke Taylor, and it's great to be with you to talk about what we love talking about, and that's just talking about films, what we've seen recently, what we've really enjoyed recently, and uh, any controversial opinions we may or may not have. And we have a few of them from time to time. <laughs> but sometimes they're just controversial between me and you. So, Luke, did you have a good Christmas? Good New Year? Yeah, I did. It was really nice. It was nice just to uh, yeah, slow down for a few weeks. And uh, But the trouble is, it was slowing down for a few weeks is you've got to gear back up again afterwards. Mm. And that's maybe taken a week, which is why we haven't done one of these yet. <laughs> Last week was, was really just sort of catching up with everything that had been missed over Christmas. Yeah, and with the business that we're in, um, Christmas is kind of a big deal. So <laughs> yeah. it was kind of yeah. busy for but me. Then right there's still until... everything else that goes on, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right up until midday on Christmas Day, I was full on and I had a bit of time off, so it's good to be back. <laughs> it is, it is. And uh, But the other good thing about Christmas is you get to watch a fair few films, although unfortunately a lot of the films I watch were Christmas films, which aren't worth discussing today. <laughs> no, and we'd already, in, and I think the last the last um, episode, wasn't it, that we put down a de- definitive list of Christmas films? Yeah. So yeah. we got that sorted. So I won't be talking about any Christmas films I watched today, although I did watch most of the ones on the list. <laughs> yes, I did. I went through the list. <laughs> Great. So, so what have what... you watched since then? Okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, and we're going to come back to this one. Last time we met, you had just seen Spider-Man No Way Home. I was going to see it the following day. We said we wouldn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I hadn't seen it yet, but that's the first thing I went to see was Spider Man No Way Home, and but it will come was back to that. But did you enjoy it? Amazing, okay. loved it, absolutely loved it. it. Made me, I was sat there at one point going, This is what you come to the cinema for, you know. Mm. Crowd with che- six points where people broke out into applause that hasn't happened for ages, ages. Had a wonderful time. Really enjoyed it. Seen it twice now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've said before, there's very few films I have been to the cinema twice to see. Hmm. I think usually because I just can't re-get that, um, that same feeling. And secondly, because if it's still shown at the cinema, then you've seen it fairly recently. Yes. So, But this was one. So I think, I think maybe two in my life that I have done that. One of them was Eight Mile and... I can't remember what the other one was. It'll be a Star Wars one, I would imagine. But um, this one, I did consider doing that. I yeah. just couldn't find the time to fit it in. I considered going right back in there, but of course it was, you know, it was too late. There was no more. On. <laughs> yeah, and I think especially with Cineworld, I don't want to promote them overly above any other cinema, but with their Unlimited, it is it is an option for stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's because it you've is. already prepaid. It does make things like that um, a bit easier. Yeah. So, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Great film. Um, I can't imagine not liking it. I'm sure there's people out there who didn't, but I can't imagine that. No, it seems to have appeased most people, didn't it? Yeah. Um, Like, as you know, like with any superhero films, particularly a certain crowd, it's hard to please. The same like with Star Wars as a fan base that, that... a call that they have to get and they know all the backstory and the ins and outs and the comics and all of these things but mm. everybody seems there seems to be universal love for it yeah yeah it's uh, and not only that it's done so well i mean considering we're in a pandemic and you know i i understand some hesitancy with going to the cinema it is now i mean it's overtook um titanic in terms of oh. box office numbers um, I'm just trying to find it's worldwide. Hold on one second. Let me just have a look for it's worldwide all time. It's currently sitting all time worldwide on uh, Avatar, of course, still is number one. That hasn't been beaten. But uh, it's currently sitting at, oh, come on. How would you find it? There we go. Click that button there. It's sitting at number eight of all time. Is, it, is Avatar still number one? Avatar still number one. Avengers Endgame is number two. Titanic Worldwide is number three. It's over. Uh, Spider Man's overtaken Titanic in America, I think. Um, but it's up there. It's number eight. It's just behind the Lion King. I've a feeling it's going to overtake the Lion King before it runs over. 
Crazy, really, for Avatar to be number one. I didn't go and see it at the cinema. It must have been one of the only people in the world that didn't, apparently. No, but, yeah, the thing with Avatar, though, is it was 3D, and 3D was really expensive then. That, that probably counts. Yeah. It costs more to go see it. It's not a great film. <laughs> I, I, it's all right. I don't get the hate that it gets, but <laughs> I don't. It's not. I, I wouldn't have said, oh, it should be the biggest grossing film of all time. <laughs> so we'll see. So but Spider Man. Uh, okay, yes, we'll come back to that. We we'll will, yeah, but I think I, I think it's it's encouraging to see a film can do that well. Now, obviously, there's inflation and all that kind of thing, but it's encouraging to see a film can still do that well. People are still ready to go to the cinema, and if something is on that people get excited by, they will go. Mm. Which is yeah, good news. Good. Um, then I watched uh, Being the Ricardos. I keep seeing that. Um, um, which on my. Amazon is it on? Yeah, it's on Amazon. I quite enjoyed it to be honest with you. Um, it was it's um, it's directed by Aaron Sorkin, um, who is he's a great writer. He's maybe not as good as a director, but you know he's serviceable. Uh, about the uh, one terrible week in the life of Lucille Ball, um, when she's been accused of being a communist and uh, mm. marriage has fallen apart and. Um, I can, but it has flashbacks to how I Love Lucy began and all of that kind of thing. I actually really enjoyed it. I think Nicole Kidman, very good in it. Um, I think uh, Javier Bardem, very good in it. J.K. Simmons is great. Um, mm. It was, it's a good film. It's really enjoyed it, but it might not be the best directed film ever. Mm. But the script is a good cast there. Yeah, I think yeah. Nicole Kidman. You say she was good in it. I think she she's an underrated actress. I think. I think. Do you know what I mean? She is a good actress. I think early on in her career, it was not just her looks, but she was chosen for certain types of roles. But I think as she's got older and got more maybe diverse roles, her acting performances are just really, really good. Mm, yeah, she's very good and, and very diverse as well. I mean, mm. there was criticism that she doesn't really look like Lucille Ball, but I think she in, embodies the character really well. Mm. And no, I thought it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so it's worth, I think it's worth a watch. I mean, it's not going to change the world, but it was good. It was good. Yeah. Uh, then I watched Don't Look Up. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's a bit like a lecture. Yeah. But you know what? At least it had some, it had some wit about it. it you know, I, I, I kind of enjoy... I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was very good in it. Yeah, he is, but I expect nothing else. But for I mean, me... And that's how I described it, I think, on my... Social that it was um, a bit like a lecture, and and that's not a negative thing. I don't mind that, mm. but you know, like when you're in a lecture and you get the point early on, you know what is being told to you, mm. and then it's almost like you got to sit through another hour of them telling you it again. Although I thought the ending was really good, was done yeah. really well. Yeah, well, I thought. I mean, it was made. It was you know, it was before the pandemic that it was made. Yeah. And 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 you feel like because it's not a commentary on the pandemic at all, and how we reacted to it. But no, every but way we've reacted it. to it is in that film. Yeah, it could apply to it very easily. <laughs> it could. So, it, it, it's, you know, I think it's, it's, it's smart, but it does feel like you are being lectured a little bit much. Yeah, and I thought it was so... I, I'll share my thoughts because I don't have to talk about it. But um, I thought it was... It was good, and I enjoyed it. I thought it dragged a bit because, as I say, it felt like I was being preached at, but that's only because I was being preached at. Mm. I understand the irony of that statement, given my job. But mm. um, but I didn't think it was... The satire was subtle enough. And I didn't think it wasn't comedy, subtle, no, not And I didn't think the comedy was funny enough. Yeah. Um, the performances captured most of the comedy for me. I mean, it was just... Leonardo DiCaprio was just this ball of nervous energy the whole time. Mm. And you're just like, yeah, you would be, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was... It was, it was it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I think there's another film we've both seen as well as The Unforgivable. Yeah. Um, with uh, Sandra Bullock. Uh, and I don't know what you thought about that. I, I quite liked... It's a very slow reveal throughout the film because you don't initially know what she's done. She's been released from prison. Um, people are having a job getting past what she's done. But I think it said a lot about when you come out of prison, what life is like. Yeah. Uh, it's it's hard. Yeah, there was a bit of that and the stigma that's attached to it and how hard it is and how much it affects your life beyond that. 
Uh, and I thought that was done really well. I thought it was really gritty. Um, I think the thing I thought, and so if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix, is it? I think so, yeah. It's on Netflix, and I, this is not a spoiler, but there is a twist in it. I'm not going to tell you what the twist is, but there is one in it. And I almost slapped myself for not getting it. Oh, it totally happened. It was done I was so like, well. No way. Because it's obvious, yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, very clear. And it, it's that slow burn of revealing a little bit of information at a time. And you begin to get the picture, and then suddenly you're just like, yeah, of course. It's one of those films that everything's building towards that last scene. And uh, Yeah. yeah. And I said, for me, um, I would say that it was a career best performance by Sandra Bullock for me. She's very good, very good. She thought she did it really well. Utterly believable. Mm. Um, a criticism I would have is, and I was talking to um, one of our mutual friends who's a Sandra Bullock enthusiast about this, um, that... The, the peripheral figures were the, just that. They were peripheral. They were very one-dimensional. There was not a lot of backstory to any of them because so mm. much focus was on the two main characters. I didn't mind that too much because you've got a limited amount of time. If it was much longer, the film, it would have felt much longer. The other characters that were there to serve as a point. You know, there's the threatening yeah. characters in the halfway yeah. house and there's the... You know, the people who help her out, the people who mistrust her, and you know, they all perform a role. And I think they do it well. Um, oh, what's the name of the guy who um, he's, he plays, who works with her? Uh, John, John, Bern, John Bernthal, who was the Punisher, yeah. I thought was very good, you know, in a role that's not got a lot of information in it. And Viola Davis was, was you know, captured her character really well. Yeah, they did well. They were probably the two standouts of the peripheral characters. But what's the guy called? John? John B Bernthal, I think, is he pronounced it? Bernthal, yeah. So he was in yeah. Punisher. He was also in uh, Walking Dead. And yes. he always plays angry characters. So in this one, it was slightly different. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He was... He was just... Every time you see him, you think, uh-oh, trouble. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> thinking he's going to be a wrong one. Um, but there was a bit in it. And say, so, don't want too many spoilers. The threatening characters you talked about, that was just nonsensical for me. It, that was just such a weak part of the plot. Mm. The, the, the reason wasn't, but the way it just came about was just like, come on. Um, but overall, I thought it was good. I thought Sandra Bullock was excellent. It was well worth a watch. So, yeah, I didn't. It showed, it, it showed me how utterly powerless you are when you come out of prison in, the, in America. Yeah. Just ever that she couldn't go back to any of her former life, and essentially you're rebuilding life from scratch. And how lonely that must be! Um, well, it was powerful, that bit, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think you know, like I was saying to you the other week, oh, I don't know how you you, you seem to get emotional at everything. I think I had a lump in my throat at the end of this one, yeah. I was yeah. like, I'm yeah, I was, yeah, it was quite oh, okay. well, suffice to say, I did too. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I just had a lump in my throat, Luke. That's it. I wasn't bothered. Oh, no, I wept. I wept. Um, <laughs> uh, then I watched The Man from Uncle. Man from Uncle. Just because it was on it was on Sky and uh, you know, uh, Henry Cavill and Army Hammer. Mm. Um, it's not great. I actually quite like. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> forgotten the director. What's his name? Um, Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie. Yeah, uh, I quite like his style. I think he's, you know, he's got a fun visual style. Um, the cast were all good. I know Army Hammer's been cancelled, so we won't comment on him. But uh, Henry Cavill, I was watching it thinking, make him Bond, just make him Bond. Well, I the other week only realized I don't know how, I don't know how, only realized. Two weeks ago, that he's English. Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he was American, and I saw him on Graham Norton. I think it was chatting away. <laughs> and I'd made a fool of myself previously on Twitter or something, saying <laughs> he'll have to work on his British accent if you're going to make him Bond. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's English, so I was he like, is. oh, yeah, yeah, he would make a good Bond, like a stacked Bond, but he'll be a Bond, a, a different Bond. But uh, you know, I think he'd be. Uh, yeah, I was just watching that thing. Just, just give him the role. He's he's basically playing Bond in that, except with an American yeah. accent. Um, yeah, it was okay. It, it 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 it's more it pretends to be more twisty than it is. I think, but I think the cast do a really good job, and it's enjoyable mm. enough. I'm not sure if I've seen it or not. There's a lot of films like that that I've watched at the cinema because they were on, or some of the friends that I used to go with every week wanted to watch it, but that are forgettable, and I don't realise I've seen them until I yes. watch them again. I, 
I, I, I didn't know I'd seen it. I was watching it thinking, oh, I'll give this a try. And then about halfway through, I was like, oh, actually, this all begins, it's ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those films that you don't remember. But yeah, I had a good time. And then we went to um, Cineworld Secret Screenings last week. Um, not knowing what the film is until it starts. And it was Kenneth Branagh's Belfast. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Uh, it, I really enjoyed it. And I'm glad it was that because I don't think I would have gone to see it. I don't you think. You chose to see it, no. Um, but uh, again, it, it, it's, it's about uh, growing up in Belfast when the troubles are kicking off and it's just this innocent kid. And you see everything through his his eyes really as to what's going on. And um, I've never fully appreciated, I mean, to, to live there while it's happened, it must have been dreadful. Yeah. Um, it's touching and it's based, I believe, on his own memories of, of what happened. Yeah, apparently it is, yeah. Um, uh, you know, so I, I thought it was uh, very good, very good, very affecting. Um, you really feel like you're in there with them. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching that. Uh, and then last night I did the Power of the Dog. Which Power is, of the Dog. That's the new Jane Campion film with um, Benedict Cumberbatch in. Yeah, yeah. I say, I've heard good things about that. Yeah, it, I, I didn't know what to expect. It's not the film I thought it was going to be. And there's no, a few it says times Western I thought mixed with a psychological thriller. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it kind of it, it goes in a different direction than what I thought. And there's a point in the film where I thought, okay, I know exactly what kind of film this is. I know what's going to happen now. And I was wrong. Mm. And I actually think it's it, it's one of those films I'm going to keep mulling over because I'm still not 100% sure what I think of it. Mm. It, it, it was, um, yeah, interesting film. Interesting film. Excellent performance by Benedict Cumberbatch. He was really good. Kirsten Dunst is very good as well. And, you know, any film is automatically enhanced by having uh, Jesse Plemons in. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that boosts up a whole, a whole star just by itself. <laughs> so, um, but interesting film. And again, it's one of those, I don't think it's settled in me yet. It's still digesting. Yeah, I've got one uh, in as well. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it caught me off guard and it didn't end as I thought it was going to end. And I, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Good stuff. And that's Anymore, me. That's Alex. me. Okay. So for me, there's a couple of things. So I watched Spider-Man. We'll come back to that because I watched it um, well, way back when, early, mid-December, I think. So December the 15th. Mm. Um, so then I watched a few Christmas films. And then on your recommendation, I watched In the Heights. Oh, yes. Well, not at the time because you'd recommend it when you'd seen it at the cinema and it came onto Sky. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um and I don't think we've ever talked about it, but, you know, I was disappointed when I watched Hamilton mm. because I just didn't get the hype. I appreciated the talent that went, but I didn't follow the story because I didn't get the history. Mm. Um, couldn't hear a word they were saying, put subtitles on that, eased it a bit, but still had no real interest in the subject matter because I didn't know what was going on and who was who. Um, maybe... If I watch it with subtitles from the start, I might get a bit more, but I, I just couldn't sit through it again. But in the Heights, I, I liked a lot more. I understood what was going on. I understood what the story was, yeah. who was arguing with who, who was helping who, who loved who. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I got all of that. Um, the dance moves numbers were good. The big songs were good. Hmm. There was more rapping in it. Um, it, was, it was joyful, I thought. Yeah, but it, the good thing I like, the one thing I liked about it, and I like it, we've talked about it before, I've talked about it like with certain films like Jaws, where sometimes you can observe it and you can like empathize with, oh, yeah, this is what it's like mm -hmm. to be there. And other times you're just drawn in, you can feel how hot it is, you can feel the music, you can almost <laughs> smell the smells and, and all of that. And it was like, it just drops, picks you up and drops you in that, yeah. in the heights. I, I liked right at the start. He's, you know, uh, it's not. He's, he's speaking to a bunch of kids on a on a beach yeah. and saying, you know, I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened in Washington Heights. And yeah. right at the start, he goes, it was a it was a place filled with music. Yeah. And from that point on, you're like, I'm okay that it's a musical. He's yeah. telling a story. He's singing the songs. I don't have to. Yeah. 
And f- just from that moment, it's okay. I get it. We're, he's telling the story. He's the one singing, you know, and I'm, and I'm good with it. And just yeah. bought into it straight away from the first song. Yeah. And, and same with me. It was like almost because you're talking about his, the place where he grew up. Mm-hmm. And almost you take ownership of that as yeah. a viewer. It's a magical and also, place to him. And there's a parallel in me with where I grew up. So it reminded me of that and the people and the faces and the different yeah. idiosyncrasies and things that went on because it's a living, living breathing organism. So, I, yeah, I really liked it. Um, thought it was good. Um, then I'd started watching um, all of the Harry Potter films again. So I won't go through them. I think I'm just, I've just finished The Order of the Phoenix today. But I like them. The books are great. The, the films one. are good adaptations. Obviously, they don't get as much in. But I think I'd only read maybe one and it was halfway through the second book, I think, when the first film came out. So in my head, the characters that played Harry Potter in the films formed my imagination in the books, mainly. Sure. Um, and then I watched the, uh, the reunion thing, which was a bit sour because J.K. Rowling wasn't there. But again, there's controversy it. about her and stuff. It was just all a, it was all a bit weird, but nice. But just I tell you what, bit... people turn on you quick nowadays, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit sickly and staged, but there was some good insights into it. Um, but yeah, I started going through the Harry Potter films, and then I watched. Um... Oh, by the way, I never noticed before. Have you ever seen Community? Community. The TV series. It rings a bell, but I don't know why. Uh, there's there's a character from Harry Potter who's he's in the first one and he's like commentates on the um on the Quidditch, Quidditch match. Yeah, and he uh, it wasn't until this because they were doing <laughs> this. I, I think I just caught it in passing when it was on someone's TV and say like, he was in community. And I always thought, I always thought that he looked like him. <laughs> he was the same guy <laughs> all this time. I was like, yeah, I always thought they looked alike. Anyway, that's by that's the why. By the way, <laughs> so then I watched um, Riders of Justice. Oh, right. which I was heard of that. quite keen to watch when I was um, when I'd seen the trailer mm-hmm. and it was the trailer makes it like what you were saying about one of the films makes you I think I thought I knew what kind of film it was and then halfway through the film I thought yeah this is exactly what I thought it was and it just goes off in a totally different direction All right. and I'm like this is brilliant so it's Mads Mikkelsen I think it's a Danish film with subtitles mm-hmm Basically, there's not too many spoilers, but a guy who's away serving in the army and his wife gets killed in an accident. But then there's a suggestion it's not an accident, so he goes to try and find out what happened and seek some kind of vengeance. Um, But it's just the characters in it are brilliant. It deals with some real proper issues, Um of the human condition, it, it was just excellent. It was a say, I thought, oh, no, exactly what's going to happen here. And it didn't, and the part where it switched almost to something else was, it was just so much heart, it was just full of beauty. It was just, yeah, it was, there's some funny bits in it, there's some deeply moving bits in it. Um, it's just such a good film. So, I'll say oh, some I'll of the characters. Watch list. Say what? I'll stick that on my to watch list. yeah. So that's on Netflix, but yeah, I really rate it highly. And then I watched Wrath of Man, which again is Guy Ritchie, Jason Statham. All right. Is that any good? I've heard, I've come across it, but I haven't really given it a try. Again, it followed a similar thing where it was some kind of revenge thriller. It's all right. It's your typical Jason Statham. It's a bit, he plays the part well, but it's just mindless, nonsensical action. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. You're far-fetched. A lot of it would not be possible. You know, you'd be shot at the first within a minute. So but, typical um, Jason Statham. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not as bad as Crank or anything. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so it was all right. It was it had a different, a different focus as well. So the lines were blurred maybe in terms of the antagonist and the protagonist mm-hmm. a little bit. Don't look up. We've already covered. Um, the Unforgivable have already covered. Then I watched The Lost Daughter. Which oh, I haven't seen that yet. But... Maggie Gyllenhaal's directorial debut. Yes. Yeah, and Olivia Coleman. And it's, I say, I, I still don't know how I feel about this film. It's, it just made me feel uneasy for the whole runtime. In a, in a, in a way that you look back and go, that was good or? I don't know. 
Oh, really? So uneasy in terms of I'm watching it, and the, she's awkward. So the things that she says and does are awkward. So they make you feel a bit uneasy, like oh, socially, oh, you wouldn't say that, you wouldn't do that. Um, maybe my Britishness, you know, <laughs> um, come through. But it's like oh, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't do that. And then your mind fills in what you think is going to happen because it's leading you a certain way. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, this is going to be awkward when this happens. And it doesn't happen or didn't for the things that I was thinking. But then the subject matter is quite, not quite difficult. It's quite, um, I've not seen anything like it before. So it's about, basically the film is about a woman that's on holiday, um, a divorced woman that's on holiday, and she sees a young woman and her daughter on holiday. And it helps, it causes her to reflect on her own time as a young mother and how challenging that was in a lot of aspects. So that is good. It's quite, not say refreshing, but it's quite, you know, important to look at that, that some of the challenges that do come with being a a parent or a young mother, whatever. So, but it's just sinister throughout. But it's it's uneasy what she says and does. It's uneasy what the other people say and do, the characters. And it's uneasy my mind filling in the blanks of things that don't happen. And then the film kind of finishes. And I don't know if it was genius or it was nonsense, but I can't... It made me feel, say, this unsettled all the way through. I mean, that's certainly... A film should make you feel so. Yeah. If that's what it's aiming for, that's good. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like you ask me what happens, and it's not not a lot really. <laughs> but once you must have about ten conversations through the film, but and yeah, so it's interesting. But I I couldn't. I was finding it hard to rate. I didn't know if I would give it a nine out of ten or a six out of ten. It was that. That's okay. strange. Hmm. I, have to get it. I think it's on my, my current, it's on my watch list. It's just not something I've got to yet. And then I finally got round to watching The Founder. Um, oh, great. Biopic about um, McDonald's, the start of McDonald's and the guy who took over the franchise aspect of it. It's a clever film. It's because oh, to start with, you're like, you're kind of on his side a little bit at the start. You know, he seems, he seems okay. He's a hardworking guy. And by the end, you're like, this guy's a monster. Yeah, greedy thief. Yeah. Um, but but then Kate was talking with my wife. We were talking. She was like, "Yeah, but is he? He just he just took an opportunity." And I was like, "Yeah, but he yeah, he he, he, took he, liberties. he he intended to steal that." As a, as a film that reveals, kind of, he intended to steal it from the start. But then, even if he didn't, the fella who helped him realize what he could do mm-hmm. he fell out with him later on, and then you know they didn't talk again. So it's like, yeah. But it was good because it made me feel that, made me feel sympathy. Almost made me want to boycott McDonald's, but... I know, it made me wish McDonald's was what it was before he got involved. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because <laughs> um, not only did he, he steal it, it seems like he kind of ruined it. Yeah, but you, then you think about the size of McDonald's now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What it, what it is, it's like... Yeah. So, but it's a great film, you know, apart from the story, which is interesting... It's like, and obviously we don't know how true it is, how much poetic license have used, but um, the script was good, the acting was really good. Michael you know, Keaton looked, looked brilliant. good. Yeah. Say what? Michael Keaton is brilliant. Oh, he was excellent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then I watched the Wedding Singer for the film club that we're in, so I rewatched the Wedding Singer. Oh, yes, that's, yes, I, yeah, I did that as well. <laughs> enjoyed that. And then just because it was on the other night and I was going to bed at half past 10, but it started Con Air, so I rewatched Con Air again. <laughs> it's one of those, if you click on through the channels and it's on, you watch it till the end. Yeah, well, it's just starting. If it was halfway through, I would have just got off to bed. I think I've got it on DVD <laughs> anyway, so it's like, because it's just starting. I was like, and I love so much about it. It's the, one of the films that flits from the sublime to the ridiculous it does. so frequently. It's just, it's like, that bit's brilliant. That's really good. I like the plot, I like the acting, the cast. And then something just nonsensical comes, and then you've got um, what's he called? Nicholas Cage drawing all the way through with his what a what a performance that is! And it's, it's one of them ones I can't imagine anybody else doing it, but he's dreadful. <laughs> it's bizarre. Back Absolutely. in the box, <laughs> <laughs> but it it all feels like 
oh, certainly in his part, intentional. Yeah. I think, I think I, all I can think is, uh, yeah, sit there watching, the, did somebody tell him this was a comedy? Well, he, he acts like it is. <laughs> he does. But he it is, acts like it's a goofy comedy. <laughs> because you've got these sinister villains. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You've got a real sinister with um, John Malkovich and Bashemi and real darkness to it. And then he's bouncing around with all these <laughs> one-liners and winks. <laughs> It's such so, a strange, strange film. So, yeah, so that's... They're the things that I've been watching. So hopefully there's a lot for you there to think about. Let us know what you think about if you've seen any of those films, particularly um, things like if you've seen The Lost Daughter or Don't Look Up, um, if you've seen them recently. Let us know what you think, because it's always hard to gauge what the wider um, population think about things. It is. <laughs> Anything you particularly disagree with, or just let us know. We'd love to hear your opinions. Um, so yeah. what have we got coming up over the next few weeks, Ian? So the next few weeks, we've got a few things. So next, next show, we're going to review 2021. We've left it a week because a lot of the podcasts and things will be doing that. So we want to um, um, just be after that, really. Um, and I know about you, questions. I still haven't settled on my list yet. There's films keep moving up and mm. down it at the moment. Got <laughs> We're going to um, say what we think are the best films that were released in 2021 and then a little few, um, yeah. Um, we'll do a few awards. Yeah, a few awards for acting and, you know, different different things like that. So we'll look at that. Then we've got a guest coming on the show after that, Stephen, who's going to come on. He's a horror movie enthusiast and he's going to talk to us um, about that and in particular why he thinks that um, it's important for young people to watch more horror films. That would be interesting because neither of us <laughs> are into them at all. <laughs> no, and it would be interesting That'd to be unpack interesting. that bit because I talked to yeah. him a little bit about, you know, I, I've never really been into horror films at all um, and whether there was some cognitive bias towards that because of, you know, the way I was brought up or... Um, my beliefs at the time, I don't know, but so we'll have a look at that um, uh, and chat about it. So it's, yeah, because it is massive, isn't it? If you look on Twitter or anything, or mm. there is like Matt that we've had on before, there's um, there's a, a massive following of people that like horror films. I think for me, it was, uh, you know, and we'll talk about it more in a couple of weeks with Steve, Steve but um, I just it didn't, do for me what they seem to do for other people. You know, I, did, I was never jumps and the jumpy thing. It never bothered me, um, and I was never, you know, psych psychologically tensed. Oh, and I was always. Time. I can't cope with this. I'm having nightmares now. <laughs> no, no, it's never that for me. Like I think I was a kid watching Freddy Krueger as the some lad had a copy <laughs> of Nightmare on Elm Street, and it'd go around the class or something, and just thinking, what's this? <laughs> Here's the thing: boiler room, got knives for hand. What? That, I remember kids being, you know, all about trying to scare you at school. With that yeah. I had never seen it because I'm too oh. scared. I'm too scared. <laughs> so, so we've got that coming up, and then we look. We're always looking for more guests. We'll talk about more films, films that come out um, and release. We'll look at specific things. We're going to look at. Um, you know, different series of films, how we would rank them, um, talk about things like that. So we've still got the Terminator films to do. Hopefully we can get Ollie on to talk about them. Um, so after today, we might look at next week, ranking our Spider-Man, the Spider-Man films in order, some kind of order. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Um, but we, 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 what we'll do this week is we'll talk specifically about one Spider-Man film. Yeah, No Way Home. Which um, may, I mean, this might be a spoiler for my list, may be the best Spider-Man film ever made. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the um, the evidence certainly points to it being up there with a lot of, you know, how much, how popular it is. Mm. I mean, it's hard when a film is new to properly see how it ages. Mm. But uh, at the moment, it, it, it jumped right to number one for me. Well, let's talk a little bit about Spider-Man No Way Home. So if you haven't seen it yet, there's probably going to be spoilers all the way over the, the oh, next yeah. part We're, of this chat. We are going to reveal stuff. So if you haven't seen it, please don't, don't watch anymore. Yeah. So if you haven't seen Spider-Man, pause this now, stop it, 
and come back to it when you have yeah. seen Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't, don't just abandon us. Come back to us after you've yeah. seen it. <laughs> Um, having said that, with the amount of money it's made so far, there can't be many of you. No, there shouldn't be. But... <laughs> Excuse me. Right. So, early thoughts. What were you, what, what, what highlights for you? Or overall thoughts first. What did you What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was good, and I think I've said to you um, off camera, off camera, <laughs> but you know, in in real life, that I should have hated it, and, and that was my thing at the beginning. So I really have no time for Doctor Strange. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He irritates me. And I really have no time for the multiverse concept. So with those two things playing so prominently in this film, I should have hated it. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't because I suppose the two go together quite obviously as they do in the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I should have hated it, but I loved it, particularly the final act for me, the last third of the film. Yeah. I thought that's where all the, all of the the culmination, all the heart came together. Yeah. You know the the big reveal of um, you know the Spider Man didn't. It was nice, but it had been speculated on for a year before. It had. I mean, people had assumed that they were in there, and then there was that released photograph of Andrew Garfield in the Spider Man outfit. Yeah, which he said was a fake. Actually, it was a video. Um, actually, I watched <laughs> I watched a, a video on that where they went through it and went uh, special effects guys who do like you know um, little videos on YouTube analyzing the footage, saying there's no way it was faked. Um, you know, <laughs> which I, you know that's how into it I was before we went. Yeah. In. <laughs> so that I didn't care, but I'd heard the rumor <laughs> and thought, yeah, it makes sense if they're going to go on them. My favorite bit of the whole film. And it's such a little bit is right at the end and say, if you're still watching, even though we've warned you about spoilers, I'm not going to apologise for this, is right at the end where he goes in to see MJ mm -hmm. after she's made him promise that he will tell her yeah. everything's happened. And he sees the plaster on her head and chooses not to. Yeah. Because it would have been so easy for them to go, yeah, let's have this happy ending. And I wanted that. Yeah, and, yeah, it hurts. Until, hurt. until it didn't happen. And I thought, yeah. It didn't take the easy way out. It didn't take the sugar-coated thing. He made a superhero's choice there. Yes. Yeah. And so he grew he, up in that moment. He, he really, I think, you know, I've enjoyed the first two films, but he's always been a little different from comic Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, because he's never gone through the stuff that, and you know, he's always had this backup and this support. And by the end of that film, he was Spider-Man, as, as yeah. Spider-Man should be. And it was just the whole, it, it's actually when you, when you see it a second time, the middle of the film is quite slow, not in a bad yeah. way, but it really sits back and goes, okay, let's get to know these characters properly. So the interplay between all the villains, you know, when he's trying to find the cure for them and they're all arguing together and all, it takes its time with that, mm. but it never stops being enjoyable for one moment. No. And people, I mean, there's been a lot of praise, and rightly so for Willem Dafoe is um, performance. Brilliant. It Brilliant. was, but, but it, it didn't steal the show for me. No, do you know what I mean? But for other people, it did. But I was like, I was glad it was in there, and it was nice. But and I liked the way they explained how they were all there, despite you know what's happened to them previously. So I like that. Yeah, and he was he came across as the credible threat, though, didn't he? He did. Yeah. The second you realise he's still unhinged, you're like, you know, he's the most dangerous one there. You got to watch yeah. that guy. And the, the de aging on him was flawless. Yeah, it did it well. Very good, very good. Um, Alfred Molina brings, you know, I think brought a great, a great uh, sense of of um, being torn between the two things. Uh, I thought it was yeah. very good. Um, you know, Sandman was kind of you. you I, I don't know whether the actor ever turned up. <laughs> you know, um, and the same for the lizard. The, did they turn up for one day? I, I don't know. But the the rest of them, I thought, and Jamie Fox was having yeah, heaps of fun. He had a great time, didn't he? <laughs> Um, I just thought it's a film that it, it had so much to fit in. It could have just become one of those films where they just throw everything at the screen. The end's a mess. It's You can't tell what's going on. Um, a story gets left out because you're trying to fit too much in, but didn't it had plenty of fun moments as it went through? Mm. Never forgot what it was. No. And uh, I, I, I sat there at one point thinking, I wish I was still 12 years old. Mm -hmm. If I'd been, you know, a 12 year old me would have been losing his mind right about now. <laughs> but even the bit where Andrew Garfield, Spider Man, 
saves MJ. That was a nice oh, touch. To, it, it, yeah. And it only took five seconds for you to get yeah. that little reaction from him that yeah. completely redeems his films. Yeah. So, yeah, that was good because, because not forgot about it, but it, the pain is mentioned and how it's still with him and the weight of that. And then redemption comes in that moment. I really, really liked it. Yeah. yeah. He was really good in it. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I thought Toby McGuire struggled a little bit, particularly when he came in just in, in his civvies. <laughs> I quite like that. Yeah, dressed as a cool youth pastor. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great line, wasn't it? It was a superb line. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I, I I I was trying to find something to criticise on it, but I, I think I had too much of a good time. I'm sure in time, as you know, you watch films again and again, there'll be stuff there, but. Um, I just I thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing. And that's the end of him now, isn't it? Well, I don't know. He's not officially contracted for anymore, but he could re-sign. Because in I my think... head, I've made, up, I've made up the rest of it, that they all meet together and everything's nice when they go to <laughs> college anyway and they make friends anyway because you can't stop that kind of friendship. But I don't know. I don't know if he can... Because now he's by himself, he can't afford to go to a different college. He's going to have to go to one local and work at the same time. But you could pick up for him. You could... Because it's going to take a while to make anyway. You could pick up at the end of college, you know, where everyone's coming back to New York and meeting up yeah, together or, again. Or he could blag it, you know, you just walk around on a campus and pretend you're there. <laughs> um, but I think there's so much potential for them to go, okay, that was the first trilogy, as it were. Now we can do same people, but let's do something new. Let's have a, you know, let's have them working for J. Jonah Jameson again, but in a different way. And, yeah, um, I think the only bit... So not criticism because it, 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 you've already knew my thoughts beforehand. The only bit I didn't like was the bit where him and Strange are wrestling about and all the world's inverted and yeah. you know that bit. I mean, oh, they, I might, quite like that bit. they might have looked good on the train and it's just nonsense. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I like the fact that you know he can do all this stuff with magic, and then the the, the second he goes, oh, you know, you can be okay. You can't work out exactly what you can do next, but judging by math, you can work out where he's going to be next. And yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, he has some good lines in it, Strange, but I just don't like the character. But... Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, but thankfully, he's not in it too much. No, and he needs to be in it. Yeah. But it wouldn't work. But I haven't watched... I haven't watched his films. I just don't like him from the cameos he's had in other films. <laughs> Fair enough. But I haven't watched the Doctor Strange film just because he irritated me and the others. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, it might be up there for the, the best Spider-Man film for me. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's certainly a contender. I can't, I don't know, I can't think of... And not just because it had three Spider-Men in. I mean, you know, and it, and it did that, you know, it did that one shot where you get all three of them doing their little hero pose together. But I actually think it's because it's sustained as a film right throughout. It never felt like it was straining to get you to, to where you were going. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and what she called, you know, there was tragedy in it as well. Oh, yeah, Aunt, yeah, when his Aunt May died. Yeah, Aunt May, so it was like... Uh... The, there was sadness there. I mean, I think there has to be because there has mm-hmm. to be a bit of balance. But um... and they nailed the tone of that. Yeah, because you thought when she got hit by the guy, you were like, "Oh, that looked hard," but then she was okay, and he was like, "Oh, I don't mm-hmm. buy that she's okay after that." Um, and then that moment where she suddenly collapsed, it comes as a shock. Well, it kind of unites him in grief with the other two. I think. Yes, it does. Yeah, because yeah. And it, I guess it, there's something deeper in, doesn't matter what universe you're in, you all suffer the same things, maybe just manifest themselves differently. There's there's joys and pain for everyone. Oh, that is deep. So, I mean, <laughs> whatever universe, whatever path, <laughs> you will still. Yeah. And then and, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. yeah, and he learns that right at the very end when he chooses not to say something. Yeah, yeah. That actually self-sacrifice yeah. is, you know, that's some good things in there, some good sermon illustrations as well. I've written a few things down. So, <laughs> so that's what we thought. What did you yeah. think? 
Um, let us know on Twitter. Don't put any spoilers on Twitter off or anything like that. But uh, let us know what you thought of it. And uh, is there anyone out there who didn't like it and uh, have something particular, a reason why? Because it's good It's good to get a variety of feedback on a film. Yeah, absolutely. I've not come across anyone yet that didn't like it. I think there's a couple on Twitter that yeah. highlighted the thought it was only OK, but the vast, vast majority have just loved it. Yeah. And it's yeah, and it, for me, it it was that one thing that just made me go. This is what cinema, cinema, big screen. You need this. This needs to still exist. Mm. That wouldn't have had the impact it had on me if I was watching it by myself in my house, no matter how big my screen is. Mm. You know the, the 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 reaction of the crowd, even some members of the crowd who were overly vocal and annoyed the life out of me. It's part of the experience. Yeah, there was only three in the screen with me, which I was pleased with because you in these covered times, <laughs> in these covered times, I want to relax into it without worrying about catching anything. So that was good. I went at ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, it was packed. Well. Was, we, we, we had a couple of friends uh, who were in the movie club with us, and one of them caught COVID because he was in a packed screen watching it and caught COVID watching it, and said afterwards, "Worth it." <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then Tom Holland is in Uncharted, isn't he, with my boy Marky Mark coming yeah, up. Yeah, have you which, seen the trailer for that? Yeah, it looks good. I mean, I like the games, but some, I've not, there's very few game-to-film adaptations that work, but this one looks promising. It, kind of, it looks like it could be fun, yeah. I want to it's, it. it's got you know, Tom Holland and Marky Mark. Um, Plus, who so doesn't like a, a good adventure movie where people are looking for a treasure of some kind? That's always fun, unless it's Jungle Cruise. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah, if it's done well, we haven't had it for a while, so. <laughs> yeah, last one. Did you see Red Notice with the Rock in? No, I've still got it on my list. Yeah, that's very. Hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to watching Belfast and King Richard. They're the ones that I want to get onto. Yes, what's due to come out? Scream's due to come out soon as well, isn't it? I'm... Yeah, I still haven't seen June yet, but I don't know what to do because it's one of them ones that you said needs to be seen on the big screen, but I missed oh, that. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's gone now, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. yeah uh, that June is what, I mean, not to spoil next week, that's one of my top films of the year, last year. So good. Um, I'm also looking forward to, I can't find it anywhere, it's Licorice Pizza. I cannot find it anywhere local. Yeah, I mean, I've heard people going on about it. I've seen it on um, Letterboxd, good reviews. But then when I read the synopsis, it sounds weird. So, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll, I'll have a look at it. Um, but I think um, I'm going to have to wait for that when I come on to Sky or something, because I just can't find it anywhere. But then, yeah, we'll have to start thinking about Oscar season and stuff. Yes. Well, what we'll do next week, we'll give out some of our awards, <laughs> which... Uh, which are probably the more prestigious and more honest than the Oscars at the moment. They, they? they are. We'll call them the Justies. <laughs> the Justies. <laughs> um, or something. But yeah, we'll have our one little uh, award ceremony next week and uh, we'll award Film of the Year. Now, we're going to have two top tens, two very different top tens, I imagine. But we'll have to try and come to a consensus at the end of it, which film should be top, top. Yeah. I don't think we'll sort out all of them, but let's try and work out which one should be top. Yeah. But I mean, that might differ on what we've seen anyway. Uh, yeah, we've probably seen very different films, yeah. Yeah, you'll have seen more 2021 releases than I have because yes. you went to the cinema more, so. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have a look. Brilliant, brilliant. Very right. good, we've enjoyed that. Yeah, we, um, we shall see you again next week when we do our top films of 2021. And send us your list, which films were your favourites, and we'll try and put on Twitter a few questions to put out for who you'd vote for for each award. Yeah, and you can get in touch with us on Twitter, follow us on Twitter, connect with us on Facebook and on YouTube, let us know. And we'll see you soon. See you then. Ciao.